What's up guys? So this week on um, Books That Saved My Life, I'm going to be reading The 50th Law. Before I get into that actually, I just want to um, give a brief background as to what's going on with the other books. Since I reviewed Rich Dad Poor Dad, I got such a great response and that's the reason why I really want to continue doing this. I think it adds a lot of value. And also, um, The Power of Habit, a lot of people ordered that as well. I just wanted to let people know that I actually haven't finished reading that book. I've actually put it aside for a second. One thing you guys should know about me is I read a lot, but I don't always finish books. And I guess that's one of the things people feel they have to finish an entire book. Now I read it and when I get to a point where, okay, I've learned enough from this, I just put it to the side. So I started reading The Power of Habit, I haven't finished that. Um, Russell Band's book, I started that, I haven't finished that. Um, I was even reading the comic Nightly News, I haven't finished that. And I might revisit it sometime, or I may never revisit them. Technically, I, I don't think you should ever feel put pressure on yourself to have to finish a book. If you're not enjoying it anymore, just move on to the next one. I think that's why a lot of people get dissuaded from reading, because they feel like, oh, I can't finish the book. Nah, forget about that. A friend of mine once told me, he said, yeah, he knows a lot of people which are influential authors, authors um, you guys have probably read. And what they do is they normally write a book and the book actually is about 80, 80 pages. But when they go to the editor, the editor says we can't print 80 pages of a book. So then they have to fill it up with another 200 or 300 more pages. So a lot of the book is actually filler. A great way to know the core points in a book is to just watch like a 45 minute interview with the author because they usually cover most of the book during that period of time anyway. Okay, so let's get into the 50th law. I read 50th law about in 2011, and the only reason I read 50th law because obviously I was I've been a big fan of 50 Cent and um, being a fan of hip hop music. When 50 Cent came out, there was such a massive hype, and he accomplished so much. But also because he partnered with an author called Robert Greene. Now, any of you who don't know Robert Greene, I recommend you check out his book. This guy is a legend. He wrote um, the 48 Laws of Power, The Art of Seduction, Mastery, and all of these books are brilliant books. Two of those are actually books that changed my life as well, and I may review them later on in this series. But he's he's a genius when it comes to writing. He writes very much in the style of. Um, in, in the style of narrative, he tells stories through history and he shows how they relate to um, current life. And I guess that's what he did with the 50th law, except for this time, it was a story of 50 Cent. And he was using 50 Cent's story to, 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 to um, reveal lessons to audience, to reveal lessons to people and how you can learn from them. Now, whether you like 50 Cent or not, you have to understand that he achieved an unprecedented amount of, amount of success not just as a rapper, but as a musician. I mean, his first album sold like 11 million copies. Now, you can see how that was an inspiration for me as an artist, you know? As someone who had a message that I wanted to say and I had words that I wanted to express, this guy has expressed his message for 11 people to buy it, regardless whether you think the message is positive or not. You have to learn from that. One thing people always do is, which is something that's actually in the book of mastery, is they dismiss things which they feel like, oh, that's not my industry, that's not an area in which I can learn from. But you learn from everywhere. A people under the necessity of creating themselves must examine everything and soak up learning the way roots of a tree soak up water. That in itself, knowledge is power. Some of my influences on YouTube, I got um, from the beauty and flat fashion bloggers. I didn't say, oh, I don't do makeup, so I'm not gonna learn from that. No, you have to understand that your whole, learning is a whole sphere. You can learn it from many different environments. Now, I wanted to learn that aspect of 50%, but what a lot of you don't know, coming from like, Wood Green, North London, um, that's, that's a rough area in London, um, a pretty bad area in London. We didn't understand, grow, as a child, I didn't understand the term entrepreneur. I didn't go to, this, first of all, you know they don't talk about that stuff in school, but I wasn't surrounded by people who were entrepreneurs and telling me this term. I may have seen an entrepreneur, but I didn't know exactly where it was. And it wasn't as popularized now as it was back then. I couldn't say, I want to be an entrepreneur. I'd say, I want to be a businessman or a businesswoman. And they'd say, what do you mean? What business do you want to be in? So 50 Cent was the first kind of entrepreneur that I understood. Now, like Jay-Z and all these guys, I appreciate entrepreneurialism. But 50 Cent was the first guy who sat down in an interview and you'd watch him talking about business and when you started reading this book this book delves into it not just 50 cents life but also the lives of other individuals and how they've used that so it's attained to success just to give an example of how the book really helped shape where i was coming from and by the way i'm only choosing short books for these series i know people don't read anyway so I just keep it short and simple you know that's the best way k-i-s-s -S, keep it simple stupid i can't remember what book i got it from if anybody knows that let me know but yeah that's the best way to get a lot of things done I'd highlight in the pages as well, just so it's a lot more efficient for me to get the right points. Yeah, it's cool for me really revisiting all these old books because I feel like I'm really relearning a lot of the things that I knew before. Um, one of the themes of the book is about having, it's about overcoming fear, which is a paramount theme in the book, overcoming fear. And it, it, it teaches you a lot how fear 
is an illusion, you know what I mean? I like the line in After Earth where Will Smith says, fear isn't real. Fear is not real, but danger is, you know? Fear is, is, is a fabrication or a creation of, 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 of our, our, our mentality. We make up fear. When you think about what you're scared of, when you're scared of something, when you really think about it, I'm afraid of it, but there's nothing tangible that's affecting me. It's all up here. So the whole theme of the book, it starts with gaining an intense sense of realism. And it talks about how people start to distance themselves from reality the more successful they get. One, let me just get a quote in there. It says, what blinds people to the reality, what blinds them to reality is the money, the lifestyle in the moment. They think it will go on forever. They're too afraid to try something else. It doesn't matter how clever you are. There's a ceiling to how high you can rise. And this talks about people in the street. Um, I used to grow up around a lot of people that were in, in the ends who were making a lot of money. And, and I used to look at them and be like, rah, these guys are making a lot of money from selling drugs and doing all this kind of stuff. And, and you kind of get drawn towards that because you want to be successful. And this book kind of set, shows how that, that aspect of life can blind people to the reality that that's not eternal. For, so for me, that was a turning point. I was like, a lot of my friends are making money doing these things, but I, I was like, there may be a ceiling to that. Let's look at the intense reality. Where are you going to be 10 years time? Because a lot of people that were hustlers or were, or were pushing on the street, what did happen was that when they got to a certain age, they couldn't do it anymore because they had kids and they wanted to get a job. Well, just, it's a dangerous lifestyle, you know? People are getting shot and stabbed consistently. So automatically, even though it's a book written by a street hustler and a gangster, that drew me away from that lifestyle. The recurring theme in my life is growing independence. I'm not saying do everything by yourself. It's impossible to do everything yourself. But growing independence, that's attaining self-reliance. And that, that was highlighted in chapter two of this book. If you do read the book, you see straight away gets into it. Make everything your own, self-reliance. When you work for others, you're at their mercy. They own your work, they owe you. Your creative spirit is squashed. What keeps you in such positions is fear of having to sink or swim on your own. Instead, you should have a greater fear of what will happen if you have to remain dependent on others for power. Your goal in every maneuver in life must be ownership. Work in the corner for yourself. When it's yours, it's yours to lose. You are more motivated, more creative, more alive. The only power in life is complete self-reliant, completely yourself. And they use an example of how 50 percent um, he was selling drugs and how um, he, he, he worked to, he used to, he used to still like, I don't know how to term, a lot of you may not be familiar with the terminology we use like in London for this stuff. Basically, basically he, used to cut the, he used to take bits out of the drug bags he was selling and he'd keep some for himself so he could then sell it on for himself and start creating his own business. Doing that, he started building his own drug empire. I'm not saying so drugs, I'm not saying it's right to prove drugs, but you can learn from every, everything. That's, that's an example. And that is a big, big thing for me. I've had offers to sign contracts and sign deals, but for me, a big thing is ownership. I don't want to... I, I want to discover myself. I don't want to be distorted to a point whereby I'm saying things I don't want to say. I'm the character. I don't. I'm the character I don't want to be. You have to create Inter intellectual property. is such a valuable thing. People don't understand their inter intellectual property rights. They sell it away and they give it to other people. But you have to have ownership of something if you truly want to be successful. If you want to be happy in life, think of it this way. Dependency is a habit that is so easy to acquire. We live in a culture that offers you all kinds of crutches. Experts turn to drugs to cure any psychological ease, mild pleasures to help pass or kill time, jobs to keep you just above the water. It's hard to resist, but once you give in, it's like a prison you enter and you cannot ever leave. Another, another great point it talks about is being creative and being original with your, with your hustle, you know, and it talks about how 50 Cent, he didn't just look at the older hustlers and create a story, he, saw, he tried to, he tried to make, mold his own path. And when you watch his music career, that message is mirrored in the early stage of his music career. I'm not so sure about his music now, or, but I'm talking about the success he's had. But in business, you can definitely see the directions he's gone. And then he goes on to talk about JFK, and he talks about how JF Kennedy refused to run a campaign like Franklin D. D. Roosevelt or any other American politician in the past. He created his own, in, 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 I don't even know that word. <laughs> It basically not imitated style, based on the times he lived in and his own personality. By going his own way, he forever altered the course of political political campaigning. This kind of inspired me because I was a spoken word artist. I started I started out doing um, spoken word and to speaking my messages to little little venues of like 30, 30 people. And I was like, I, if I keep on doing this, I'm only ever going to reach 30 people. I want a message that's going to resonate with the world. How am I going to do that? And this book um, was kind of the, the stepping stone for one of those, one of those ideologies. Just, just, we got that bit, so, mm -hmm. so. So the book is, is, is so much like, 
a character building book is a character building book more than just a biography some people tend to veer away from biographies what because what biographies tend to do is they tend to glorify everybody's life and they talk about all the great things they did but you get a distorted perception because you're looking at everything in hindsight so this book is more like a character building in merge with a biography it's the same way love and basketball which is one of my favorite films it's not so much about basketball it's really about love Basketball is the backdrop for the love that takes place. 50 Cent's life is the backdrop for the lessons that people learn. And yeah, learning to be creative, learning to be individual, and it, talk, and it gives examples. One thing about Robert Greene's book, always gives example of people and how they've implemented practices. And what is interesting as well is that he always talks about the flip side. He also shows that this is enough, it's called the reversal to the rule. If you watch 48 Laws of Power, he'll talk about if you follow the rule, which is the, the idea, how it can benefit you. But you can also talk about how following the rules sometimes can act to your detriment. So you're always aware that there's two sides to every story. And that's, I think that's what a lot of authors don't do when they write books. They write books and they they, they, they drum on one perspective and say, this is what's gonna make you be successful. Then when it doesn't happen, you're confused, you know? Do not be taken in by the culture of ease. Self-help books and experts will try to convince you that you can have what you want by following a few simple steps. Things that come easy and fast will leave just as fast. The only way to gain self-reliance or any power is through great effort and practice. He also talks about, it's a real character building book, Respect the Process, Mastery. The fools in life want things fast and easy. Money, success, attention, boredom is their great enemy and, enemy and fear. Whatever they manage to get slips through their hands as fast as it comes to you. On the hub, you, on the other hand, want to outlast your rivals. You're building the foundation for something that can continue to expand. To make this happen, you have to serve as an, as an apprenticeship. You must learn early on to endure the hours of practice and drudgery, knowing that in the end, all of that time will translate into a higher pleasure. Mastery of a craft and yourself. Your goal is to reach an ultimate skill level, an intuitive feel for what must come next. It's a very aggressive book. All Robert Greene's books are very aggressive. It's, it tells you the harsh reality. It talks about people getting their head chopped off. But as you notice, me describing the book, I don't go into that much depth about 50 cents. It's more lessons used from 50 cents. But 50 cents story is a great life story um, that, that brings forth a lot, of the, a lot of the issues that you face in life and a lot of the issues. He's gone from being a hustler in the street selling drugs to one of the top figures in the corporate America or one of the uh, top figures in the music industry and it explains that and it's very rare that you can take a situation like that and look at it from a perspective of this is the lesson I learned from it that's the lesson I learned from it and that's why I think it's a really great book I'd, I'd like for you guys to let me know if you've read it and let me know what you think of it if you haven't seen my Rich Dad Poor Dad review make sure you check that out I will not let an exam result decide my fate. These teas, um, you can get them on my website. I appreciate everyone who's getting involved in the MGM challenge. As you can see, I've got the manifesto in the background, the millennial generation manifesto. Character building, the book is all character building. You go to um, another chapter, progressing through trial and error. You know, it's a very strong book about building your character. And that's what I really, really admire about Robert Greene's book. Check out the 48 Laws of Power, 48 Laws of Power, which is really, really harsh. But he's an aggressive writer and I think through aggression you do get a point across and Mastery is also a very very good book. I'll put the links down to everything I've mentioned in this video. You guys may notice that the quality of this video is slightly different. If you follow me on Snapchat you, you know my whole adventure that I went through to the day and how I eventually managed to shoot this video. So if you don't follow me on Snapchat make sure you do follow me. Next week I'm going to be reviewing The Manuscript Found in Accra by Paolo Coelho who's the author of The Alchemist. That's an amazing book and it's very short. Um, if you can read it before the next review so it's a lot more interesting discussion but I'm going to be reviewing it with my partner in crime and my best friend in the whole world. Who, this lady right here. Hello. Who's also, who's also my fiance. It's supposed to show the ring oh, when yeah, I say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, sorry. Hi. Make sure it's in focus because that costs me a lot of money, people. Yeah, it's in focus. <laughs> oh, no, no. Um, yeah, you should follow her on arcslikeshe.com. She's a big um, inspiration to me because uh, the secret behind a lot of my success because there were times when I felt down and she always used to seem to be able to give me the right advice. And then I said to her, why don't you ever put that into a form other people can appreciate? So she has a blog, arcslikeshe.com, which is just advice she used to give me over the years and advice she keeps on learning, and which she shares through a blog post. Let me know what you think of this book if you do read it. I highly recommend it. Most importantly, overcoming fear. A lot of us, like, fear is what holds us back from so many things. We may not even know it's fear. We may think, oh, it's a disability or it's a, ment it's a, it's a mental um, disorder. But it's really fear. 